Hey, on this episode of the Ritual Misery podcast, Kent goes tubing on TV. Uh, with a little bit of Teen Wolf. Woo! I'm, I'm not sure how that goes. Um, <laughs> are, there, are there more cities than there are skylines? That's a good question. And also, are we about to make your anus great again? Uh, <laughs> probably not. Hey, um, have you ever ran 200 miles? Uh, nope, and I don't plan to. Me neither. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 178 for Thursday, the 21st of June, 2018 or so. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and you are you, and we thank you for being here. Yeah, what's going on, man? <laughs> uh, that was a hell of a pre-show. Um, it, it really was. It really was. We got to work on the intro, though, man. We, we we might need to like just throw some random words on the screen and just kind of go at it because, whoo. <laughs> yeah, that was rough. Uh, <laughs> That's what she dude, said. hell of a week. It's been uh, it's been crazy. Yeah. Uh, I don't really have anything about my week that was spectacular and fun to talk about, but I bet you did. Uh, well, it was really just the, the beginning of the week since last Thursday. So Friday, Friday, my wife and a bunch of her coworkers did an Alaskan 200 mile relay where they run from Mirror Lake up here by our house down to the, uh, Kenai Peninsula. And it's not exactly, it's not 200 miles in a row. They don't all run it to relay. So they'd swap out at certain points. And there's a few areas where the, the road is literally the only passage between here and there, and they can't just turn the road off while everybody runs. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's there's a couple areas where, and, and it kind of goes around through Anchorage and stuff. Um, really fun. Did some ph- photography for it, and it rained like nobody's business from the like the third leg on. So everybody was mm-hmm. soaked, including myself, and it, it wasn't bad. I mean, it was, it, was, uh, uh, it was one of those events that I was glad to be part of, but I'm never going to do. And I sure, sure, sure as hell, I'm never going to run it. No doubt, man. Like, so 200 mile relay, how many people were on the team? Uh, the teams were, uh, well, see, they had a few different kinds, but uh, the majority of the teams were 12 person teams uh, divided into two, two teams within a team of six people, or, yeah, six people each. So all the people from, from the first vehicle had to run and then all the people from the second vehicle ran then all the people from the first vehicle and it the you had to go in order on the on the vehicles you know vehicle one or van one van two van one van two van one van two but the people could swap out in do whatever leg they wanted to do so it, there's like some logistics involved and you know you had mm-hmm. to choose ones the elevation and the climbing and there's part of it that i had to like shift the truck into four-wheel drive to follow the runner and stuff like it was it's pretty interesting oh wow yeah, so it, it, if my math is right, it sounds like about three miles, a little under three miles a person for the 200 miles. Um, 12, 30, uh, 200 miles divided by six le- or by, by 36 legs, so whatever that math comes out to. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, man, that's that's still pretty crazy. I mean, if you're into running, that sounds like it would be fun. Um, mm. Lots of different types of terrain and... Yeah, uh, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of urban and a lot of, uh, like, straight wilderness, like, running through the mountains and stuff. So, I don't know, it was pretty cool. We had people flying from out of state for the team that my wife was on, and then I know, uh, like, a couple other teams were doing stuff, and one team was in tutus, and, yeah, it kind of got a little crazy there for a little bit. I don't know if, like, the, the money, the entrance fees and things like that, if they went to a charity or what. I know they were sponsored by uh, the Bleeding Heart Brewery here in Alaska, but... Uh, Never had any of their beers, so I don't know what's going on with that. Well, I, I, I should have found out more information, but you know what? Now I know it exists, so we can check it out next year. <sighs> right on. This right is my on. detailed on the ground reporting. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so the, uh, the most interesting thing that I did this week actually was uh, I read an article about something called Tubi TV, T U B I TV. Mm hmm. And I was like, what the hell is this? Because the article caught my attention because it said something about free legal TV. It's like, oh, so my my cord cutter ears perked up. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, let me check this out. So I went and checked it out. And uh, no kidding. The, so Tubi TV is – it's a website. It's an app. Uh, it's on iOS. It's on Android. It's on Amazon Fire. It's on like pretty much you name it, Apple TV. 
It's in all the places. And it is 100% free. It is ran by, I guess, like a consortium of of movie, uh, not theaters, studios. Mm. Uh, they, they put a lot of their back catalog on this thing. Uh, TV shows and movies and documentaries. So, uh, you know, a- there's anime on there. There's all kinds of stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Nothing super new. Uh, the, I think the newest thing I saw was from like, I don't know, maybe five years ago or something right. like that. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of cult classic movies on there and a lot of stuff from the 80s, like Teen Wolf, um, uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, like good stuff. Uh, just nothing really new. Uh, apparently, they f- these studios fund this thing with an advertising pool. Mm. Uh, kind of like the um, you know the advertisement auction house stuff that right. you know uh, bid on a two minute ad or bid on a thirty second ad or whatever the the case, and uh, that's how they fund this thing. And uh, I guess they make a lot of money off of it. But for us, the consumers, you might have to sit through a thirty second ad once in a while, which I have only encountered so far on the website. When I had uh, Teen Wolf on my Apple TV. I got through the entire hour and 40 minutes or whatever with not a single ad. Hmm. Uh, but it's amazing. There's there's thousands of of titles on this thing. Uh, so I, I definitely encourage everyone to check it out. Um, it's, it, it, it's, it plays a lot like um, like Netflix or something like that. Right. But it's like I said, it's just it's just catalog stuff, old old stuff. It, it, uh, I I have seen some ads on here. Um, uh, uh, one in particular, and this is there's another app called DocuRama, which is like made by the same company under the same mm-hmm, premise, mm-hmm. except just basically just documentaries. And uh, I, I saw a few commercials on there. They were uh, inappropriately timed, which I guess is probably the optimal way of doing it. Because if you're about ready to have something really exciting happen and a random commercial just pops in, then you're more likely to watch it because you want to see what happens right after that. But it, right. it, 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 it was intrusive, but it didn't seem bothersome, especially considering it's completely free. Right, right. Uh, so. But yeah, so like, like I said, I watched Teen Wolf. Mm-hmm. Uh, How'd that hold up? Uh, wh- how long has it been since you've seen Teen Wolf? Mm, since it was on HBO. Okay, so probably about as long as it's been for me, like <laughs> twenty five plus years. Like I, last time I watched it, I think it might have been on VHS. Uh, yeah, like just yeah. out in VHS, like local think, local VHS rent a stop kind of thing. I think the last time I saw Teen Wolf. I was watching a VHS tape that I had recorded off of television. Mm. Uh, I, I've seen Teen Wolf probably, I don't know, a few dozen times. Mm. I loved that movie as a kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't hold up. Uh, like, at all? I mean, uh, it's entertaining. Is it? Is it, it, it <laughs> like, it doesn't hold up as in you wanted to leave the room, you wanted to gouge your eyes out, or you wanted to cut a thumb off to make it stop? I th- okay, so this was one of the experiences where I was happy to be watching it by myself mm. because my enthusiasm for watching this movie the other night was pretty high because this was one of my favorite movies as a kid. Right. I was like, oh god, this movie is so good. But the movie just kept being cringy bad. Like like I felt proud of the movie, but then you know when you when you're proud of something that you create and you you put it out into the world and you watch people's reactions to it and mm-hmm. it's not good and you get that like embarrassed feeling or whatever. Now, granted, I had nothing to do <laughs> with the making of Teen Wolf, but at the the pride at which I had for liking it, I guess I don't know. It's a weird it's a weird sensation, mm. but watching it the other night had me cringing like that that shame almost it was <laughs> it was bad dude and it's very it's very dated it's very mid 80s mm. this is back when uh, uh you know using the, the the f word pejorative for homosexuals was um not just okay but like top level comedy uh in reference to to actual homosexuals yeah. So, okay. As an example, in the movie, when um, when Michael J. Fox's character was about to come out to his friend Styles that he's a werewolf, yeah, it's kind of like you know beating around the bush about like how he's gonna tell him. He's like Styles, I you know I gotta, I really got something I gotta tell you. And then Styles says, uh, "Please, please tell me you're not you're not a 
about to tell me that you're a fag. And uh, Michael J. Fox says, no, Jesus, no, I'm not a fag. And then Styles was like, well, good, because I don't think I can handle that. Wow. Or some, something to Talk that. Talk about you know, dating like, something. Holy shit. Yeah. Did not <clears throat> age well. <laughs> yeah. I, I had to ask because be, there's there's a special time in, in our childhood where, like, because, and, and it's weird. I, I recently listened to Louis C.K.'s Chewed Up again. And I was listening to it with, with Amber because she'd never heard it. And it talks about offensive words. And one of the things he's, you know, one of the things he's talking about is the word faggot. How faggot didn't mean gay. It, it meant there being a faggot, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a special time. And as you're saying, as you're talking just now, I, I re realized that, like, fag was never the same as faggot. Fag always meant gay. In in my in 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 my world in my in my vernacular, right, right. But faggot right. was separate from fag. Like the two weren't linked in my in my vocabulary until like later on. Mm -hmm. So that's why I had to ask. Yeah, no, I th I think when like when I was growing up, I think they were synonymous. Yeah. Um, I mean, I get the I get the difference because I think I've I've seen pop culture references like mm -hmm. as a kid where. Like I understood the difference, you know, it's like the, the difference of calling a woman a bitch and, and calling a man a bitch, right? Like the context is different, right? So like calling a woman that, you know, it's like, a, you, you know, you're a mean, spiteful person, right? Right. But calling a man that it means that you're weak, right? You know, um, and I, I think it was kind of the same, um, the same connotations with, you know, between, you know, fag and faggot. Uh, where oh, at the end of the day, they meant the same thing in my vocabulary, hmm. but they kind of had a, you know, depending on the context, I suppose. Th this goes back to the whole, uh, and, and Mbeam says, isn't it also a cigarette in the UK? It, it is. That, that is. that is fact. Very much um, is. But a faggot is a <clears throat> bundle of sticks. Right. Yeah, totally, totally. See, again, not related. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Amber and I were having a conversation about when... When 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 vernacular when when words when meanings go out of vogue and then it it becomes like and like it becomes taboo right when you look at the past where does that line go and for how long and under what circumstances do you give the past a pass? Mm. You know, like right. that, that movie at the time that was th th that was commonplace. That was just how it was. It's it, like common culture had accepted mm -hmm. that it was still being gay was very taboo at the time, even though it had been, it had been rising to prominence for quite a while, but it wasn't socially accepted on a national level. Right. And I'm not saying that it is now don't, don't send us the hate mail. I, well, I, mean, I don't yeah, know. I mean, no, we're a lot closer than right. the eighties though. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, but when when do you go when when because you couldn't say that now that line would not pass now it'd be like oh you know it would have to be specifically derogatory and not in a funny way and like a mean way and be in the spirit of the movie in the medium in order to 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 get the pass and be able to be used that way back then right. it was a comedy bit like when does when does that transition happen and where where do you for like when can you forgive Michael J Fox for for having that line in his movie versus yeah. you know well it, where it's not acceptable yeah well see and that's the interesting thing like i i'm not mad at teen wolf i'm not mad at michael j fox you know i'm not mad at anyone involved with that with the movie because of of that line mm -hmm. uh, but it's like a so like it, let's put it this way if there was someone someone today who has not seen that movie so someone like, uh, you know, like our kids, right? Mm -hmm. Our kids hadn't seen it. And we were watching it for the first time today. That would be an uncomfortable moment, mm. you know? But like if, if I was watching it with you, it would be a different, you know, we'd be having this conversation, right? you know? Or, or different... we would just be laughing because we understood the context of the movie and we just, we would just move on. But right. But, but yeah. 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 <laughs> that, that whole, that whole gray area, like it's bad here. It was acceptable here. So where do you, you know, where, where do you give the, the pass, a pa the past, a pass? And yeah, that, that was a, that's a whole conversation. Like that's many beers in before you can finally even wrap your head around that concept, let alone come to conclusion.
<laughs> so anyway, Teen Wolf didn't hold up. Uh, didn't for me. <laughs> it was it was fun to watch it, but I was um yeah. Hmm. Didn't you know, quite. You know what has held up? Not quite as long. I, well, probably as long. Um, yeah, probably as long. My love for the game Sim City. Mm. I love me some Sim City. It's one of those games that I've never been good at, but damn it, I love playing the shit out of it. Um, there's a new version out. It's not really a new version. It's like a tangent version. It's called Cities Skylines. I've been playing it for oh, a couple okay. years now. I hadn't played it for well over a year. I hadn't played it since I moved to Alaska, at least. I played it a lot while I was in Korea that last time. Um, I fired it up this weekend because I just had this hankering to be a mayor and start building and destroying things. <laughs> yes. I got to say, dude, there's something about the whole concept of of running a city, a virtual city with virtual citizens um, or simizens. Is that what they were? Uh, uh, there were Sims. Yeah. Um, um, but Simizens, I think. But uh, yeah, it was super fun. And 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 City Skylines is one of those games on Steam where it's got like tons of like mods and shit like that. People have added to the game and all that kind of stuff. And holy crap, you can spend hours just because I have uh, just browsing all <laughs> the shit people have have made for the game. It's incredible. So so much fun. Yeah, I liked. I always liked creating in Sim City, but the actual running of the city. Mm. Um, I always sucked at that. Like I could never get uh, get out of the red. Like mm. I was I was never in the black in Simpson. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what inevitably happened every single time I played you, that game? You'd get fired. Was I would well no before that happened I would bring in the disasters. I would bring in a tornado <laughs> or something and just destroy the city. I remember one uh, time I I had I had gotten myself in the in the in the green in the black. Um, this is on SimCity. Was it? 2000 or whatever the, last, yeah, the one for probably. for Super Nintendo. Yes, um, 2000. I had gotten myself in the black and I was only making like each quarter I was making like a couple thousand dollars or whatever, you know, of the millions of dollars you're supposed to have, right? <laughs> so what I did is I was going away for like a weekend. I left my Nintendo on, put the speed on fast forward and then just left. Oh my god. I came back and I had tons of money. I had no citizens. <laughs> Oh, God, did Some, they all die? Sometime in the last half or so uh, of the weekend, uh, a couple of uh, natural disasters had come through and, like, wiped out some some key uh, some key buildings, like, you know, the hospital and the, the fire department and, and, the, oh, and no. the police station. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was bad. Um, I, yeah, and I, I didn't save it. I just, like... Yeah, I, I liked the uh, the DLC that would come out every now and then when it would have a new disaster, like mm. an alien invasion or monster attack or something like that. Those were always fun. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, what I do is I play in sandbox mode where you, you have unlimited money and I just build up a city. And then I click it off sandbox mode and see if I can run it from there. <laughs> <laughs> Immediate fail. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, I'm, I always end up with like too much police coverage and not enough fire coverage and half the city's burning, but there's no crime, you know, like, there's always <laughs> something fucked up going on. <laughs> it's probably the cops setting the fires. <laughs> They're like, we're bored. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that's, that's what's going on there. Um, I, I talked, uh, I finally talked to the wife and we are going to get the movie pass. They just announced today that they're going to be doing some surge pricing. Which is yeah. uh, I don't know how that's going to work, but we're going to go ahead and do the movie pass, and uh, that stems from the fact that we all like movies, and we haven't been out, out to watch any lately. So other people did though. Yeah, man. other, other uh, people watched a lot of movies. Jurassic World is coming out this weekend. Um, we we don't have any movies coming out <laughs> for like a couple more weeks. <sighs> yeah, dude. Um, let's see what let's see what Jay has to say about uh the movie draft this week yeah how's that how's that going jay welcome to your b-team movie draft minute presented by diamondclub.tv for the week of june 18th 2018 i'm your host big boys jay they always say don't try this at home so i'm coming over to your house to try it but first let's go to the scoreboard 
Team Walking Drunk is in last place with $48.6 million. Team The Vod Squad's in fifth place with $113.7 million. Team Ritual Misery's in fourth place with $375.8 million. Team Game Night's in third place with $433.7 million. Team Movie Party rockets to second place thanks to Incredibles 2's $200 million debut, bringing their total to $597.6 million. And in first place yet again, it's Team Have a Drink with seven. dollars at $45.2 million. That's your movie draft minute. Big ups to Nashcom for tonight's music. All told is accurate as of Wednesday, June 20th, 2018. Yeah. Dude, we're not in a good spot right now. Holy shit, you came back and you're like just blowing the hell out. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Well, uh, shall we try to fix that? Um, I, I, I might have. I just adjusted on my end. Um, see, and here I was thinking, oh, he froze. I can go ahead and do this during the little movie draft minute. Nobody will ever notice that uh, he froze and, did, and then came back. And no, you came back all shitty sounding. Well, no. Um, hey, man, we are uh, we're we're slowly gliding backwards. <laughs> yeah, it was really cool being in first place. Uh, All those weeks ago. Yeah. Um, here's the crazy thing, though. This is the part that gets me. Right now, a quiet place is still worth thirteen million dollars for every uh, a, a movie buck we spent. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but the the bad part about that is that it only made one hundred eighty six million dollars. Uh, the really bad part about that is that uh, book club. Sold for five dollars and has has brought in uh, sixty three million dollars and is now worth twelve dollars for every dollar that it's been spent. So we don't, we're we're about to lose first place on the per dollar rate as well. Yeah. yeah. Damn it. Oh my gosh, dude. Uh, so Vod Squad's got Jurassic World, and that man, if that thing has the legs that it could have, we're in danger of of falling into fifth place. Yeah. Because we're only, uh, well, I mean, I guess we're we're about two hundred and two hundred million and some change by, uh, ahead of them. So I don't think it's going to happen like in a in a week or anything. Man, uh, but, mm. I'm looking, and Game Night's got another movie coming at the end of the at the end of the cycle. Uh, movie Party has another movie coming up. They got two more. They got one coming out this weekend and one coming out right at the end. Uh, have a drink. They only have one more movie coming out. Um, towards the end there like it's going to come down to the very end of this thing man mm-hmm. it's uh I, I just and we have we have two more movies coming out yeah we've got uh transylvania three uh, hotel transylvania three and, and mission, impossible. mission impossible yeah we we could we, we we could fight for for scraps in in the top three um yeah i'm pretty confident we're not going to be last <laughs> that's all <laughs> that's all i'm willing to, to say man uh, uh I, I, honestly i don't even know about that because uh the walking drunk team they've got two three four four movies coming out still yeah they do they yeah if they've got a sleeper hit in this then we might be in trouble yeah um well ant-man they have ant-man and the wasp which true which yep. could be pretty big and they have slender man at the, at the end of the season so like, yeah, a late summer horror movie that that could be I, a big deal. This whole thing might be really, really bad on us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. I, I tell you what, though, dude, if we <clears throat> if we come in last place, this is going to be a very uh, high total for last place because we're already we're pushing up on four hundred million dollars. Mm. And dude, that means that everyone else would have to get more money than us. That's a lot of ticket sales this year. Yeah, that, this and, sum- and that's the crazy part. I think this summer has really been really been going crazy. Um, hey, uh, real quick, while we're still talking about the movies, Solo has brought in two hundred million dollars. Um, mm. It's about two thirds of what Deadpool's brought in. It's a third of the Inv- uh, uh, Avengers: Infinity War. Like, mm-hmm. are these good numbers? Um. Like, yeah, like, well, like after having seen the movie, is this what you expected? Two, I, see, I, I figured Solo would be bringing in a lot more. I, I figured it would be like more in the 300 million range as opposed to two. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But, I, you know, I think the movie is making a lot more money overseas that's helping it out. Uh, like, they've, they've gotten their money back because uh, it cost about $250 million to make. Mm-hmm. Domestically, they're sitting about $200 million. Uh, but they they surpassed their two hundred fifty million uh, break even point overall. Right. Um, I don't know, man. I I know there was a million news articles about how you know the movie's a bomb because it only made two hundred million dollars. Well, fucking eat shit. It's not a bomb. Right. Um, it's it's low numbers for a Star Wars movie, of course. But I I think that I think we can chalk that up to this came out like six months after the last Star Wars movie. Not not even six months. Yeah, it was it was really close on the heels. Yeah. Uh, uh, my big question on this, though, is how do you feel this pretends to Episode nine? Um, are, are I don't pe- think are, it's going to... Are, are people burnt out? Because or, or, I've seen a lot of hate just today on, on Twitter and stuff like that for um, for The Last Jedi, which, again, on, on second viewing, I actually enjoyed it l- a lot more than I did the first time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think Solo's numbers are going to affect Episode Nine, mostly because it's we're a year and a half away from yeah. getting Episode Nine, so we're we're going to have a Star Wars drought for a little while. Uh, so I think any Star Wars fatigue that exists, I think, will go away by the time Nine comes out. So should they just held off on this one until until November? <sighs> probably they probably should have. Um, I. I don't know. It's hard to gauge stuff like that. I personally loved Solo. I thought it was great. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't have a problem with any of the new Star Wars stuff that has come out. So I might be in the minority. Uh, I'm just a Star Wars nerd, and I love all this, all the stuff. So yeah. just give me more. Give me more. The only thing, I mean, I haven't seen Solo yet, but I didn't like uh, Rogue One. But I've only seen it once, so I'm still waiting to right. see that one again. To maybe, maybe, maybe yeah. It it might it might click a little bit better than than if it follows the 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 last Jedi then it'll click a lot better the second time and I mm. but if, I liked the last Jedi the first time I saw it so yeah and well and I think one of the things that that makes people disappointed about a Star Wars movie is the expectations that they set for themselves mm-hmm. so if you expect one thing and you get something else or you expect a certain level of quality and it doesn't hit that mark you're gonna leave disappointed. But if knowing what the movie already is, like knowing, okay, this is what to expect. This is this is what I'm uh, looking for in this movie. Your expectations are are met at that point. You know what I mean? So I think automatically it's going to be a better experience, unless you just have that much vile for it that you can't allow yourself to enjoy. Yeah. Uh, did you see the thing remake the Last Jedi? Uh, you see this on Twitter? Yeah, it's one of the stupid freaking uh, uh, like st- from one of the Star Wars nerd boards or whatever. I think it's uh, I think it's from Reddit actually, but uh, the reason that it's getting traction now is because Ryan Johnson went onto the board and said, uh, "Fine, why don't you fans go ahead and make a better version of it?" Uh, his his quote is. Please, 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 please actually happen. Please, 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 <laughs> please, and a whole bunch of praying hands. <laughs> um, I think it would be great if, if somebody did this and Ryan Johnson and like the, the cast and crew of The Last Jedi did nothing but troll this movie. Uh, I... I, I Man, I'm just <laughs> I, I I like TFA. I liked uh The Last Jedi. Fuck off. Just let the movies be what they are. Like, yeah, Disney's yep. ruining it. Guess what? They ruined fucking Cinderella back in the fifties too. So fuck off. Like just, <laughs> just eat a dick, man. If you don't like it, don't watch it. Just fucking don't 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 pay your money to go hate on it. Like that's that's the best thing yep. you can do is hate on it from <laughs> afar so we can all ignore the fuck out of you because you won't know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah, um, just make your own website and post your your you know shit post to your own website. Yeah, yeah. If, 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 if people it, want to read your garbage, they'll go yeah. to your website and read uh, it. Star Wars shit post dot com. Uh, yes. Find that it's shit on. Thing. Yeah, go uh, our, our latest affiliate link. Star Wars shit post dot com. Cruise on by there. Enter the code <laughs> Ritual Misery for ten percent off your shit posting uh, hosting needs. Um, and uh, uh, take a big fuck off while you're at it. Um, <laughs> 
Just, I'm, just oh, I'm, I'm in a mood. I'm in a fucking mood. Hey, uh, speaking of Star Wars, dude, uh, what the hell is going on with the Department of Defense right now? Like, we're, we're, all the things that I have to say about this on the surface are things that I'm not allowed to say because of my job. So I'm sure you have something more informative to say. So uh, what? I'll let you cruise on into uh, the, the Star Wars Part 2, Reagan era Star Wars Part 2. Um, <laughs> right. And, oh and I'll reserve the right to interrupt you at any given time. Go. <laughs> okay, so... President Trump earlier this week announced that Space Force is going to be a branch of the United States military, uh, a full service, just like, you know, Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force. Uh, But much like the Marines kind of falls under the the Department of the Navy, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Space Force might might actually fall under the Department of the Air Force. Uh, But so. There's a lot of speculation about what Space Force is, what he, what, what the president uh, b- believes that it should be. Um, what, be. Actually, before I dive into that, one thing I do want to point out is that Space Force doesn't exist yet. A, an executive order cannot create a branch of service. That has to be a congressional act. Uh, but what an executive order can do is begin like the bureaucratic processes of of, uh, you know, creating, uh, like department chiefs and stuff like that. Uh, he won't be able to appoint a secretary like, you know, like we have the secretary of the air force. He can't appoint a secretary of the space force until Congress approves that. Well, we, uh, we, so we, we don't have a secretary of the Marines either though. Well, right. That's it's, what I was saying. It, they fall under the department of the Navy. Right. So this might actually be one of those, one of those things where space force is subordinate to the air force, same way the Marines is subordinate to, uh, the Navy, even though it's, it's a separate, uh, branch of service. It's it, like administratively falls under the department. That, that's of the, Navy. the whole opcon ad con bullshit that like C 17s go through in PACAF. Like, right. PACAF has administrative control, but AMC has operational control. Fuck off. That doesn't work. It, nobody understands that shit. Yeah, that's like ACC being in charge of uh, uh, shit. What is the uh, what's the AOR? Sitcom. Oh, sitcom. Sitcom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, sitcom so, tells me where to go, and and ACC says I'm going to send these. It's it's yeah. It's, so it's to shit. put a little context on on this, uh, we already have a space command, and we have for a very long time. I, I'm not even sure when that originated, like in the 60s or 70s or something. It's been around for quite a while. Mm. Uh, Space Command as it exists today, because it's gone through different forms, different iterations, but how Space Command exists today, it, it's under the Department of the Air Force. It's one of the major commands, just like Air Combat Command and Air Education and Training Command, mm-hmm. uh, et cetera, right? So Space Command is part of the Air Force, and it it's kind of contained in the, like if we're talking about joint commands, like CENTCOM and stuff like that, it's part of uh, the U.S. Uh, strategic command. So right. Space Force is in charge of our ICBMs, so like the the nuclear capability, like nuclear launch capability that the United States has. Uh, they're in charge of uh, satellite operations, like uh, monitoring the, uh, you know, the satellites that we have in space, the U.S. assets that are in space. They monitor um, uh, like any of the like surveillance activity of uh, you know, like our spy satellites, any sort of, um, well, we don't, we don't, we don't have spy satellites. We sure. Have, sure. We have, we have, we have a uh, low orbit observation posts that may occasionally glance in the wrong direction <laughs> or have nothing else to look at. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Let's go with that. <laughs> uh, but also like the, the weather satellites, I, I just like low orbit observation post. <laughs> <laughs> like, like there's a dude out there. He's like, uh, ah, I'm just hanging out. Got some binoculars. Oh, look right. at China. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so any of the weather satellites, communication satellites, any of that sort of stuff, Space Command is in charge of monitoring all of that sort of activity. Like right. basically all of the U.S. assets in space, Space Command is in charge of. To include NORAD, which um, for the most part falls under the Air Force uh, and tracks all the space junk. Yep, space junk. Um, any Anytime a 
country might launch a missile, like a long range missile, uh, that NORAD tracks that. And that's, that's, you know, mm-hmm. space command. Um, uh, so not only, so the air force runs space command, but it's one of those things that, that the sister services are involved as well. Right. Like it's a, it's the a Navy, joint command. Right. Exactly. Then yeah, it acts just like a joint command, like CENTCOM, uh, just happens to be yep. air force. No, but what what's the space force going to do? Like, what why the why the distinction? Have you seen anything about it? Why why there'd be a distinction other than I, because we need space balls in our life? <laughs> Make your anus great again. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> already working on it. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, you know, I I have not seen anything official, because like, like I said, the the formation of space command or I, I'm sorry, space force would have to be a, a, a congressional act. Like we're nowhere near ready for Congress to vote on this. The, there has to be like uh, the president's executive order basically is going to, going to set forth the framework of what space force should be, what the responsibilities, the missions, uh, et cetera. So uh, my understanding or my guess, I suppose, is that space force will take over all of the missions that space command has, which we've already kind of covered, but I can see future missions being things like developing weapon systems for uh, an actual space battle. So not, you know, not star Wars, star Trek style, like, you know, X wings or, you know, uh, constitution class warships or, you know, in space, we're not talking about that. Um, but I want a space they, frigate. Can we get a space frigate? <laughs> yeah, I want a Firefly class. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, in space, oh, no one he- in space, no one can hear you. Exactly. <laughs> I-, I want my Firefly to come with a Kaylee. Uh, or an Anara. I mean, you know, there's options there. That's all I'm saying. It's <laughs> right. Uh, oh my gosh, no, but uh, so when it comes to a space battle, what I mean by that is if an adversarial nation was uh, trying to sabotage our systems in space, uh, like our satellites, like let's say our communication satellites, the, the space battle I'm referring to would be our satellites defending themselves or having some sort of a platform, like a laser platform or something like that in orbit that would prevent uh, other countries' assets from damaging ours. Now we're getting into the Star Wars Reagan era part two that I was referring Correct. to before because that was a load of shit that we spent a lot of money on. Didn't turn <laughs> out to be anything that we know you of. Know, when I was a kid back in the early 80s and every time they said <clears throat> Star Wars on the news, my ears perked up and mm. I ran to the television just to find out they're talking about President Reagan and some bullshit government project. <laughs> And I was upset every time. Look, right now there are some hammers in low Earth orbit just just waiting to bound <laughs> on something. All right, some some eighty five billion dollar hammers. Uh. Oh gosh! All right, so so basically, satellite defense or like asset defense, I think, would be one one mission that Space Force would take up. Now, whether that is just launching more satellites into space that that performs that, or if we're talking about manning space stations, like having something like Skylab or the ISS that's that's manned with our troops, like our space troops that would actually like maybe spacewalk onto enemy satellites and sabotage them or something. I who and knows? Maybe maybe it'll be both. I don't or, know. Or or we're fucking going to Alpha Centauri, dude. Um eventually like, <laughs> I could see that be I'm gonna rename well, I'm NASA gonna rename it see- Amos Centauri. <laughs> I think NASA needs to do their part in that first because NASA is probably forever going to be the exploratory arm of our government as far as space goes. I am surprised how many people thought NASA was actually like a branch of the military. It blew me away to include my Uh, sister-in-law was like, isn't NASA the the branch of the military in the space? I was like, well, no, I can can understand that misconception because uh, all of our astronauts, well, the vast majority of our astronauts, particularly uh, the pilots, are either Military. Navy or Air Force pilots. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, real, real quick, uh, T. Midif uh, just popped in the chat room. And uh, if, if that's the T. Midif that I think it is, that's awesome. Thanks for stopping by, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. Good to have you here. 
Um, yeah, so so asset defense, I, I think a, another mission that that would be useful for far future, most likely, is to defend Earth itself from threats from space like asteroids. Uh, you know, what what has wiped out all of the well, nearly all of the life on Earth in the past. Mm. Uh, that could may, happen again. May this time also, it would be may also humans. be responsible for the for the carrying of life to Earth. Let's not forget. Carrying of life to Earth. Oh, the, the asteroids, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Okay, sure, sure. I mean, th- th- uh, as far as I know, there's still a plausible theory that that may be how life started here on Earth was uh, uh, carbon-based material from outer space being deposited here and then being allowed to, sure. to develop into life. So th- yeah, I just absolutely. want to see both sides of the coin, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know any any threat that comes from space, be it an asteroid or or what have you, and then of course there's the the outlier possibility of of alien life coming to mm. Earth and threatening us. Um, I don't see that it, it, being that great of a possibility, honestly. But if if that's the case, it's essentially an early warning system that we're going to die. That's all that is. Because I'm down with Stephen Hawking. <laughs> if they can fucking make it here, we're not surviving that shit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we'd but be like, no, no, send them aliens back. Uh, bring in the asteroids. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and fight the asteroids because the aliens. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it would bring a uh, new meaning to illegal alien. Uh. Well. See, even then, like, how do you draw boundaries? Because the Earth and our solar system are constantly moving. So what if we just like meander into their boundary? Like, who fucks up mm. who then? You know, the, like international waters, man. <laughs> It's interstellar space, dude. Like it, it, everything, everything's legal in Jersey. I mean, uh, where are we again? It would have to. I mean, you'd have to have like the, uh, distance from the surface of your planet. <laughs> I think would have to be the or or whatever your territory is. So whether right. it's a planet, a moon, etc., there has to be like you know within I don't know half a light year <laughs> of the planet's surface. I don't know twenty three parsecs. What, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> Twelve parsecs. <laughs> hey, uh, so the real mission of the Space Force as of now, though, is to bring us awesome memes um, like uh, yes. Donald Trump saying we're going to rebuild the Death Star. It's, it'll be amazing. Believe me. So luxurious. And the aliens will pay for it. Uh, yeah, I love that. This is uh, let me click over to this. This is amazing. This is this has been the best part of the week so far, um, especially yeah. in, like maintainer humor and stuff like that. The uh, the Facebook pages. Oh, my God. Yes. Like it, it, immediately after the announcement, there were like 200 memes just popped up in that feed and it was beautiful. Oh yeah. So, so many dude. There's, so here's another example. One aliens are bringing space drugs. They're bringing intergalactic crime. They're probers. And some, I assume are good extraterrestrials. <laughs> Make black holes uh, white again. <laughs> it's just wrong. Oh, that's so wrong. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, and then I, I, I'll be remiss if I don't read this one. Uh, this is this would be a campaign slogan, I guess. For um, anyway, uh, I'm not going to prompt it. I'll just go ahead and read it. Wait till you meet some alien chicks. When you're an Earthling, you can grab them by the pussy. They let you do it. You can do anything. Crickets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, uh, no, that, that sounds that's, that sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Space Force, let us know what you think about Space Force and should Amos and I leave the Air Force for the Space Force? And if so, what should our jobs be? Uh, the answer to that is obviously yes. <laughs> <laughs> our um, jobs should be yes. Hey, now, what are you drinking? I, I noticed a bottle that wasn't that wasn't normal. Uh, I'm actually drinking out of a can. I'm having Founders All Day IPA. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, which is quite tasty and it's a uh, low alcohol it's only 4.7 percent as opposed to the six and a half percent of sierra nevada pale ale that i typically drink during mm. the show i am of course drinking the official beer of ritual Mis- misery studios the alaskan amber um <gasps> yes so that is uh of course help us get to a billion doing. downloads yeah a bi- a one billion downloads and they'll give us a 12 pack um i'm pretty <laughs> sure that's what i heard somewhere um Let's go and uh, let's find out what the Have a Drink guys are actually uh, 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 drinking this week. I'm going to click the button and uh, hope hope it works because I didn't preload it. (laughs) 
Thanks, guys. Today we're talking about a new uh, kind of a new deal in the bourbon industry. Henry McKenna, 10-year single barrel bottled in bond. So tell us why we're talking about this a little bit. Well, uh, we could say that's probably a nice, well-kept bourbon secret. Yes. Um, it, But it the secret got out. It's a 2018 San Francisco World Spirits uh, competition happened, and it won for uh, best single barrel bourbon. Uh Plus, I think best bourbon overall. Yeah, absolutely. So whenever you come to to look at bourbons and, and how they do, this is one of the big competitions to look at. This bourbon comes from Heaven Hill Distillery. Um, it is an ongoing release, so it's nothing special. Although this particular barrel was barrel number 2068. I'm sure all that's been bought up by now. Um, this is a 10-year-old bourbon for $30, which really makes it something special. That's, yeah, for that price, that's a fantastic bottle of bourbon absolutely again like all bottled and bond bourbons it has to be 100 proof Ooh. it's served in glass and so if you can find this on shelves highly suggest picking it up pick up five mm, aroma you're going to get a lot of that oak a lot of that vanilla i want a candle made of this <laughs> the flavor comes through with a lot of those same oak vanilla burnt brown sugar aromas and flavors I want to live inside that barrel. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just drinking this, and it's amazing. It is a very good bourbon. No matter what barrel you get, it's going to be great. But if you'd like to learn more about this bourbon or specifically any other drink out there, you can always listen to us at haveadrinkshow.com. Mm-hmm. Again, I am Casey Price. And I'm Justin Frazier. Hey, we'll see you next time. Uh, I'm just going to say uh, Horde side. <laughs> um uh, you know, the World of Warcraft movie, mm-hmm. did you watch that? I did. Yeah, I watched that movie at Chris and Brittany's house just before the um, the taping of a Have a Drink episode. Yeah? Yep. In, a little in, trivia. And you're still not Horde side, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no. See, I, that's, I've, <laughs> I've actually never played World of Warcraft. I, I played Warcraft 3. Oh, yeah. Long time ago. Then you were definitely horde side then. Well, sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It, it was fun. I like the RTS aspect of the game, mm-hmm. uh, but World of Warcraft is not RTS in any way, shape, or form. No. So I, I well, don't really I mean, care that much about the lore. It was technically just technically it is. Really. Technically, um, I mean, yeah. Squid showing his support in the chat. Horde side. Horde side. Uh, so yeah. I actually have that as part of my signature for my outgoing emails at work, as you've seen. And yes. also on there is a dentist for Tuna Juvet. And I just found out I sent sent we have a new civilian uh, deputy commander of our group. Mm. Uh, and he came back and he's like, oh, uh, former Juvet, huh? Hmm. Crush him. <laughs> and I was like, uh, what is best in life? <laughs> and he knew the answer. So we're good. Uh, I'm All I'm going to say is push it up. Uh, right on into your twat. <laughs> Tampons. All right, man. Oh, hey, uh, it's about time we get out of here. Uh, where can people find more about you and how you like to push it in? I mean, up. <laughs> Head over to twitter.com and look me up. I am at RM underscore Del Noche. Hit me up over there. If you are interested in what I think about different beers, get on over to Untapped. I am Del Noche on there i'm either del noche or del noche 77 almost anywhere on the internet what about you dude um i'm uh you can find me on twitter at ethan kane e-t-h-a-n-c-a-i-n-e i just like saying it i have been doing some beer reviews but unfortunately i'm on ios 12 right now and uh, untapped is not working on ios 12 so my beer reviews are are pending uh sad day but you can follow the show at Ritual Misery, and you can follow all the things that we do at RitualMisery.com, all the other shows we have, everything else we got going on. Hey, dude, you got a show coming out soon, don't you? Like, damn, like forever from now, but I can't say shit because I've got a show that I haven't produced in forever, so I'm just going to shut up about that and move on with a little thing that I'm reading over here. Uh, we are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on DiamondGlobe.tv and Twitch.com slash Ritual Misery. Ah, uh, yeah. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music um, and for the chat room for uh, for M-Beam and Squid and Kruge and uh, T. Midif. Um, appreciate you guys hanging out and uh, chatting with us. Uh, thank you for listening. For Kent, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya! <laughs> I got myself off that time. and
Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Hey, dude, um, we didn't get to your last episode last week or two weeks ago or whatever. Uh, yeah, that'll be a, that'll be a good uh, post-show mm. fodder. Uh, we also did not pimp our Patreon, uh, so I guess we can go ahead and tell our post-show folks, patreon.com slash ritual misery if you want to support what we got going on over here. Yep. Um, hey, uh, rmp.showbot.tv, cruise on over by, over by there. I was saying pull my volume up, but uh, I've actually been trying to pull yours down, so... Uh, oh. That sounds odd. 